Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to another edition of Rock the Stage Show, Sunday night, 7 p.m. We're back once again, talking to global influencers, leaders, actors, directors, and doctors. And tonight we're going to get back into the doctor space, but we're going to have a lot of fun with this because we're talking about happiness. But let me give you some information about the current state of happiness in our world. You might not be too surprised. The state of happiness doesn't appear to be too good right now. Recent studies have say about 34% of adults in the country here in the United States say they're very happy. That's not too bad. And this is coming from the Pew Research Center. Now, the other half say they're pretty happy. Yeah, that's about 15% consider themselves not to be so happy though. 15% consider themselves not too happy. Now the studies also are saying that we're maybe at an all-time low of happiness. Some studies say it's pretty dark and pretty grim, but it doesn't have to be that way. So tonight as we get going, I want you to ask you, how do you feel about your happiness? On a scale of one to 10, rate yourself tonight. And as we stream on YouTube, add it to the chat conversation if you would. And of course, welcome if you're streaming live internationally on the Public Place Network with PPN. But rate yourself tonight on how do you think your happiness is doing? Because tonight we're gonna to talk about navigating life's challenges while maintaining our happiness. Think about that. The challenges are gonna come, but we're gonna figure out how to maintain it and do it better. Tonight, we have an expert guest in this area. Dr. Elia Gregorius is with us tonight. He's the president of the Happiness Center, an, an organization of world-leading experts in the field of positive psychology dedicated to creating personal success and happiness. Dr. Elia is the author of the number one best-selling Amazon book, Seven Paths of Lasting Happiness, which has been translated into five languages. So when I say we're international, we're international. Um, he also has co-authored the highly acclaimed Seven Keys to Navigating a Crisis. He is frequently presents on international conferences, focuses on happiness, corporate wellness, and mental health. Welcome to me to bring to the stage, Dr. Elia Gregorius. Welcome, doctor. Thank you, Rich. It's a pleasure. And let's rock the stage. I'm ready to go. Let's there go. There we go. I love the positive energy right away, right out of the chute. There we go. That's how you should do it. <laughs> so let me ask you, by the way, because people are probably going to say, I'm happy. But do you have a definition to help us maybe dive into this? What is happiness? Do I have a definition for you? I didn't come up with it. There's a guy you may have heard of. His name is Aristotle. <laughs> <laughs> the great Greek philosopher from 2,500 years ago said the following. He said, happiness is the whole purpose and meaning of life the whole aim and end of human existence. Think about what he just said, right? 2,500 yeah. years ago. So listen, I, I get to speak all over the world. Mm -hmm. And before I start my talk, it doesn't matter what country I'm in, I ask the audience, if you were to ask any parent, any parent, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, religious affiliation, you know, gender and all that stuff, the question, what would you like for your children? What's the answer to that question? I just want them to be, Happy. <laughs> there you go. So if we feel that way about the kids or our grandkids and so on, isn't that also true that we should feel that way about ourselves? Mm. Now, that's very true. So let me go back. You grew up in Athens, Greece. I did. You are an international man yourself, and you were part of a national swim team. So what did growing up in Greece help you learn about happiness? Is there a different flavor of happiness? How did that impact you? You know, that's, you know, that's a great story. So my family and I moved to Santa Monica, California when I was 10 years old. So it was a big transition for us. And, and we really had a great life in Greece. So it wasn't not, not the typical immigrant perhaps coming to the United States, but my mom got cancer. And back in those days, it was a death sentence. And, uh, you know, for us to, I mean, they both spoke English, you, you know, they had lived in Los Angeles before. So we moved there. So it was a big transition. It was very hard for us, honestly, uprooting us from a great life. My dad, in his wisdom, sat my brother and I down and said, listen, 
there are things in America that Greece is not going to catch in a hundred years, meaning the opportunities, you know, this great, you know, the American dream and so on. Yeah. However, he said, there are things in Greece that America won't catch in a thousand years. Meaning, wow. Meaning the philosophy, the, you know, the culture, the richness of, you know, this Mediterranean beautiful country. So he's, he looks at both of us and I was like 11 years old. He said, he goes, so from now on, take the best of both worlds. What great advice. Amazing advice. So, you know, I, I'm a world citizen and my wife is a world citizen. We raise our kids to be that way. So there are great things that this country has to offer. Opportunities go or both my brother and I got PhDs and, you know, we, we successful careers and so on. But the life in Greece is also beautiful, yes. unmatched, healthy food, social connectivity. You know, Greece has one of the five blue zones The you know, where people live 100 years old. Now, the, yes. island, the island of Icaria. You know, like Sardinia in Italy and, you know, Okinawa, I think, in Japan and Costa Rica. The, yes. And then Loma Linda in California. So part of the philosophy is connect with people, eat good food, moderate exercise, walk as much as you can, be outside in nature, laugh a lot, because we're Greeks. We laugh a lot. I love that. <laughs> it's a big, and therefore, you know, when you do that, and we'll talk about it in this interview, you know, the greatest drug dealer in the world resides, you know where? The, the best drugs are right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're happy, when you're in a state of gratitude and so on, all the chemicals get released into your system and stay with it for a long time. So that's part of happiness is happiness is a choice, but it's also a skill set. So let me go there. So how did you make that journey from global family traveling to say, I'm going to be an expert in happiness? Well, what got that to be the thing for you? You know, my background, my, the first half of my career, I was a clinical psychologist in private practice. So I got to be on the front row of watching people come in with all kinds of issues. You know, and I, I believe that God gave me a gift, honestly, to be able to see other people's potential and their best selves before they could see it in themselves. Yes, I love that. So, you know, they would come in and say, you know, my name is John and, uh, and uh, I'm an addict, for example. And I, and, I, and I did a lot of addictions. And I would be like, first session, I'm like, no, John, that's not it. They're like, what? You don't know anything about addictions. <laughs> you know? I'm like, no. And my dissertation was on Alcoholics Anonymous. I went to a lot of meetings. I, I know some things about addiction. I'm yes. like, no, John, you're a husband, you're a father, you're a friend, you're a son, you're a brother, you have your professional career, and yes, you do struggle with certain behaviors that are destructive and have, that's true. But I'm here to tell you, you're so much more than an addict. And they were like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you'll see, let's spend a year together, get you sober, get you in the right path, and you'll see how your life can blossom. And I've done this with people, thousands of people, not a hundred, not 50, yes. thousands, because I could see their potential. I see their goodness. So <laughs> you, you just hit the nail on the head. So right away, we're off script. We're going, everybody. We're yeah, I, know, I love to do. I have also worked with AA, rehab people, ex-prison inmates. And when I would sit down and talk to them, and I heard the very same things. But now I would say there's gold in you. Yes. They literally would drop a jaw and go, no one's ever told me their gold. They said this, this, and this, and this. Every swear word under the word. But they've never said their gold. When I said there's gold, and we're going to help you mine that gold and help you find and bring it back to life. Someone just took a brick backpack off of them and let them fly. Do you feel that way when you see that too, that they literally for the first time, maybe have freedom to fly. And you know, the, you know, it, this could be like, you know, big guys, CEOs, like successful people by world standards, but their personal life is a disaster mess. And they would start to cry. It was like, nobody has ever seen that in me. No. You know, and in time with help, basically, you know, I, when I coach people, I, I listen to them, I give them the tools and I hold them accountable. They do all the work. They do all the work, not me. But through that accountability and the love and I love big. I, I have a, my wife's like, how do you love so many people? So I'm like, I don't know. I have a big heart. I love everybody. <laughs> it's okay. It is, you know? Everyone's your new best friend, right? Well, uh, oftentimes, yes. You meet somebody like, where have you been all my life? You know, <laughs> I just believe in the in the goodness of people. I'm not blind to human frailties and weaknesses mm -hmm. and addiction and so on. I'm not saying that, but I'm like, there's so much more to us than our worst part of ourselves. There's so much more to us than that. So do you think by nature, 
or by training or by whatever, we're drawn to the negative and we live there more than we should live and look for the joy and the happiness of life. Are we drawn to it? Curious about it? What is it that we stay negative instead of living the joy that you and I are discussing? One of the things that I discovered with my with my patients was that let's let's continue with this uh you know the addiction yeah for them. So we have a year, they're sober, they're doing good, they're going to meetings, they're they're doing great. Then we have like what I would call the last interview, and I'm like, Do you think your spouse has forgiven you? Yes, your kids, yes, your whoever you offended or you hurt through, you know, God, whatever. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Then the question is, so John, have you forgiven yourself? You know what the best answer I received? The best, not the most common. The best answer was, I'm working on it. Yep. But more frequently, we would be no. So to me, self-forgiveness is a key to happiness. Self-forgiveness is probably the greatest act of self-compassion we can do is to forgive ourselves for our human frailties. Yep. And because I believe that we're all graduates from the university of adversity, all of us. And the older we get, the more adversity we have, <laughs> the higher the degree. <laughs> I, so the question is, and this is you know, our conversation, but can we be in the middle of adversity and still be grateful? Um, because having an attitude of gratitude is easy when things are going well. That's the easiest thing in the world. I can write three things, different things every day on my journal yeah. and never repeat myself for a year when things are working out. But that's not how life is. Life has challenges. But some people treat that as a bumper sticker. It's a quick slogan. It's a throwaway phrase now. But what right. we're talking about, it really can happen. And there's probably tips and strategies to help you live in that happiness zone more than the gray and negative zone. And it probably starts with a mental choice. Today, I'm choosing to be happy. And, you know, one of my all-time all role models and I, men I respect greatly well, it was Nelson Mandela, who at some point said in life, listen to this, in life, either you win or you learn. There's wow. no, as long as we're learning something, there is no losing. And, you know, you and I have done some things good in our lives. We had some successes and our failures too, mm -hmm. but the greatest lessons, at least personally, have never come from my successes. The greatest lessons in my life have come from what at the time seemed to be setbacks, yes. mistakes, human frailties and weaknesses. And it's only afterwards when you look back and you go, I know exactly why that happened to me. So, so I could be where I am here today. So if you're learning something, there's no losing. Right, right. Well, and looking through it, I mean, for me personally, the, the things I've had to go through and the ex-cons and people I work with, a lot of it is that shift of, I'm gonna find the light today. Yes, yeah, so there's plenty of darkness. I've got a career to build, make, rebuild, a marriage rebuild. I have all this around me. I'm gonna find that light thing today. And that's where I'm gonna spend more time instead of spending more time beating myself on the negative stuff, because there's always gonna be more, right? And you know, we all have an inner critic, we do. So the question is how loud is that voice or how soft is it? A lot of people have their inner critic runs their life, yes. honestly. Yes. And, and therefore that's why there's no self-forgiveness. For me, self-forgiveness, first of all, we have to have a sense of humor and don't take ourselves too seriously, man. Can you repeat <laughs> that, please? Can you absolutely repeat that? Because people <laughs> don't hear that enough. Yes, I think we need to take ourselves lighter. I think we need to have a sense of humor and, and realize that, hey, it's not the end of the world. Very few things are truly breaking right. news. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Our own... <laughs> Honestly, I don't buy... There are no breaking news. Breaking news happens once in a blue moon. Like, really, even in... I mean, globally, in yeah. the news cycle, but I'm talking even about our personal lives. Mm -hmm. Don't take yourself so seriously. So, and, and you know, my wife says, we've been married for 33 years. We've got a great relationship. She goes, you seem to practice self-forgiveness fairly quickly. How do you do that? I'm like, because I don't take myself seriously. And now I have an excuse. I'm an old man. It's an old <laughs> <laughs> I have the excuse. Whoop. <laughs> I tell people, some of what I do, I take serious. The message I share when of I course. keynote, when I travel. Do, do I take me serious? No way. I know who I am right. and I know the ups and downs and it makes me more confident of accepting, letting it roll off the back and laugh even at my own mistakes publicly. I don't think a lot of people have maybe have the personality types. So they don't have the wiring for it. What is it that limits people from getting there? 
or, or they don't uh, they truly don't know how to self forgive I, I honestly i don't think a lot of people they, they know they should do it they just don't have the pathway so i teach people how to practice self forgiveness and it's not that hard actually so here's so if i had a client yeah I'm like okay please write down all the things you have not forgiven yourself for throughout your whole life it could be five things 10 things or 50 things once they're done with that list give it a number or a ranking on a scale of one through 10. One is I spilled milk at the, at the restaurant and I, I'm embarrassed because I got all over my pants. That's a one. Mm -hmm. A 10 would be you actually killed somebody, like physically committed murder. Yeah. Okay. So now rank them. And then we begin the process of self-forgiveness. And with most people, you know, you start with your ones, twos, and threes, the easy stuff to forgive. Right. To gain some momentum and, and get some practice. Yeah. But Rick, Here's what I discovered though. I didn't know that at first. When, when I work with alpha males, like the big, like strong people, they do it, they're like, Dr. Elia, I'm gonna start with my 10. And I'm like, <laughs> why? <laughs> but their theory is because if I can forgive myself with the worst thing that I've ever done, then everything else is easier. I right. mean, that is a way. So frankly, I don't care which way people go, as long as they start the process. I usually start with the softer, the, the easier stuff and build momentum. But right. if you're like an alpha, do it which, whichever way works for you. I don't really care as long as you do it. So are there certain personality types that deal with this whole joy, happiness, life crisis? Are there different personalities on how they do relate to what we're talking about? So when we when human beings face challenges, there are actually four personality types in how they do it. The first one, let's call them the victim. Yeah. And the victim is why is this happening to me as if it's only happening to me and not 8 billion other people right. and they're always the poor me it's always the poor me they get down they get depressed they're like poor me that's one the second one is the critic now the critic rate will criticize any the world health organization the united nations the government the president their boss their spouse their kids they're always into blame frustration and anger all the time that's all they do mm -hmm. the third one we'd like to call the bystander basically it's Mind you, a, a decent human being, but someone who's so overwhelmed by the changes that are taking place and they feel so out of control in life and they're, they're in fear mode, kind of like the deer with the headlights look kind of. Yes. So they're frozen in fear and they don't do anything. So what all three of these personality types have in common is they don't move the needle forward to some kind of resolution, right? Either it's poor me, either I get mad, or either I'm frozen in fear. Now right. comes the navigator, number four. And the call to action for all your listeners and everybody else is for us to be navigators, to navigate life successfully. But here's the key. It's not like you and I are the navigators and everybody else is the critic and the victim. All human beings have all four of those personality types within themselves. All of, all of us do, including myself. So the key is, if you, if you want to feel like a victim, it's normal, it's natural. Do it for 30 minutes, not for 30 years. If you want to get mad and criticize somebody for whatever, sometimes it's legit, legitimate, righteous anger, whatever. Yeah. Do it for half an hour, but not for six months, because who are you hurting, them or yourself? So feel your feelings, vent, get them out, journal, talk to somebody else, go to therapy, go to coach, and then pivot and become a navigator, because navigators know how to be successful in life, and they do certain things on a consistent basis. So let me drop this on you because I, I i see the world of news again media television news been there done that i've always told people i'm terrible as a news journalist because i get too emotional i can't read about the car tragedies and all the things going on in our world i'd rather do what i'm doing with you but as part of navigating this is learning how to shut that junk off and because you can only take so much of it until you are going to feel the negative the critic it just keeps coming at you louder and louder and this doomsday every day is part of it learning to say, shut it off, walk away, go a different direction. Yeah, actually, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I wrote the second book about how to navigate, you know, the, the, the challenge of life, I shut down the news. I haven't watched the news in about maybe four years, which doesn't mean I'm not informed. I am informed. I get the news. I don't watch the news. I get the news from sources that I, I feel like are legitimate and it's not propaganda or to the left or to the right. They're actual news like Walter Cronkite used to do years ago. The actual yes. News. <laughs> and but I was laughing at before when I said breaking news, because to me, you cannot have breaking news every hour. That's not no. breaking news used to be something extraordinary happened like a 9-11. That's that is breaking news. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this breaking news done, done, done. And the, that's all made 
to keep us down and to keep us fearful. I don't buy into fear. I'm not a fearful person. I don't buy into fear. That's not my paradigm. Yes. That's it. So I limit the intake of that negativity because it's not good for my soul. Do you understand? Oh, absolutely. I'm totally there with you. So personally, how does it make you feel these last several years of filter, limit, dial it back on the news and the junk? How, how, how much healthier and happier are you personally, do you think? A lot more. And also, I feel like I'm in control of what goes in here. I, I'm in control of that. There's a filter. And by, that doesn't mean I'm in denial or my head is in the sand. It's not like that. I'm very informed about global news on this every single day. Yes. I just don't buy into the fear. Right. I don't buy into the fear. Um, and you know what was really funny? When the book came out about the pandemic, it was the first book to market in the world. It, it came out in May of 2020. So yeah. obviously everything was shut down at the time. So everything happened through Zoom. And, you know, I had to walk a fine line, masks, no mask, vaccines, no vaccines, because, yeah. you, you know, you have to walk it because you're going to get from both sides. But when I used to say, look, I don't buy into the fear, I got pushed back even live on TV, like live here. People were like, well, it sounds like you're not taking this seriously. I'm like, it's not that. I'm just don't want to live in fear. And they're like, well, what if you get sick? I'm like, and then what? Well, what if you get really sick? I'm like, <laughs> and then what? Well, what if you die? And then I'm like, and I leaned in, and then what? Aren't we all going to die? I'm not saying I want to die. I, mm -hmm. I have a lot to live for. I'm just saying I can't live in fear. That's worse than death to me. So now we're touching on the mental health. And I know yeah. you're involved on a weekly basis with the mental health television network. But mental yeah. health, happiness, and creating this way that you control the information pouring in right. is all interconnected, isn't it? Of course it is. Because... I mean, it's like, what kind of food? What are you feeding your body? It's the same thing. What are you putting into your body? What are you putting into your mind? What are you putting into your soul has impact? Now, it can be positive or negative. And I choose to have a positive impact. And that's part of the navigators, by the way, when we talked about the things that do consistently. Yes. First and foremost, they practice massive self-care, meaning physically, mostly mentally, and spiritually. My self-care is a non-negotiable, non-negotiable. And people are like, well, isn't self-care selfish? I'm like, yes, <laughs> and do more. <laughs> yes, keep doing it. <laughs> so what are some of the other attributes in, of the navigator? What what are these things that help them? Um, yeah, I, I think I think part of it is is of course having the attitude like we talked about and being grateful because you cannot be grateful and depressed simultaneously at the same time. That's right. physiologically impossible because when we're grateful, the endorphins, the serotonin, the dopamine, all that comes out. So that's number one. The other one is, I would say, uh, flexibility and adaptability. Mm. And, and what do I mean by that? The, let's use the analogy. I, I call it the oak tree and the palm tree. Okay. So oak trees, as you know, are these beautiful, majestic, massive trees, 100 feet high, 200 feet high, stable and strong and powerful and beautiful. However, in, in storms, if there's enough rain and enough saturation on the ground and then enough wind, what happens to oak trees? Is they there... come crashing down yeah. on people, cars, and homes. This happens in every hurricane season. Yes. On the flip side, palm trees who are kind of, you know, they're kind of exotic and tropical and uh, cute. And at the peak of the storm, now I'm, th I'm talking about the storms of life now, but at the mm -hmm. peak of the storm, palm trees can bend parallel to the ground, flat, yes. flat. But yes. when the storm passes, as every storm will pass and the sun will come out again, they rise up. And now, not only do they survive, but they are stronger because underground, their roots were holding on for dear life. So the call to action, of course, in navigators are be a palm tree, don't be an oak tree. And I've shared this message throughout the world. People have said, that's a cute story, Dr. Hill. I remember that. <laughs> but in real life, what does an oak tree mentality sound like when you say don't be an oak tree? Not An oak tree is like, well, this is how I've been the last 40 years. I'm not going to change now. This right. is who I am. Right? <laughs> yeah. And that lack of flexibility. I'm a huge sports fanatic. A huge sports fan. Elite athletes who get paid millions and millions of dollars just to play a game, whether yep. it's football, soccer, basketball, hockey, baseball, or whatever. Before every game, they're out in the field for half an hour before the game starts doing what? What are they doing out there? They're practicing, they're warming up, but a lot of them are mentally going through winning the game. And they're stretching. Like, I'm actually yeah. physically talking, they stretch. Yeah. Why do these elite athletes that are like, they're supermen, right? 
Yeah. Why do they stretch? What happens if you don't warm up and if you don't stretch? You pull a hammy, you get injured quicker, you cramp up, all those things. So you and I and everybody here listening in, we're in the Super Bowl of life, right? Yeah. We need to be flexible and adaptable if we are to succeed. If we, how many companies or individuals stuck in their ways, the winds are changing. Are you reading? Are you reading the, the you know what I'm saying? And they oh, don't yeah. change along. Oh, yeah. And, they, and then they are left behind. Okay. Yeah. So being flexible and adaptable is a big part of um it's self-care but it's also a, a, a big part of how navigators are successful the other thing that they do is they have the big picture perspective navigators can pull back the camera mm -hmm. and say first of all these two shall pass eventually things work out they may not happen tomorrow but eventually things are they have a positive attitude so that helps them to be successful but the biggest thing is is that they take action even because though they're life, with fear, they take action, right? They take action, unlike the other ones who either blame or poor me or they get upset or they don't do anything. Because in life, you know, it doesn't matter what we know. What matters is what do we do with what we know? That's what matters. Well, like don't you we said, all know? Don't we all know what's good for us? We do know. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we know. But do we do it? But navigators actually move into action. And then as a result of all that stuff, they actually perform conscious, mindful, and consistent acts of kindness towards others. Why? Because their own batteries are full. Whether well, happy people, because their batteries full, can look around and extend a hand of brotherhood or sisterhood mm -hmm. because they're really in a good place. And they do that freely. It doesn't cost anything. So that's part of becoming a navigator. That's it. Self-care, gratitude, flexibility, positive attitude, kindness. Well, and I've oh. always been taught and one and more believed. Thing. Go ahead. If, if my tank is not full with joy, with happiness, with laughter, the things we're talking about, if my tank is not full, I cannot spill it over and give it away. And my passion is I want to give it away and think, let's go back to the self-care. People laugh about this whole self-care. But if I don't take care of myself, I can never fill my cup to spill it over. So exactly. it all fits together, doesn't it? It, it? it does fit together. And I forgot the last thing that uh, navigators do, which is, and this is kind of falls into the more spiritual domain, not religious, but spiritual. They listen, what I call with a third ear. So they yeah. listen to that voice. Now, if you're a spiritual person, you can say it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It could be your intuition or your higher self. Frankly, I don't care what you call it, as long as you listen to it. Yes. And, and I've been listening to that voice. Yeah, first of all, you have to get quiet. So you have to disengage from electronics to, to hear that voice. Go for a walk in nature. Yep. I get all my answers either in the shower or when I walk in nature. And I the downloads keep coming. <laughs> yes. So, and this is one of the few absolutes in life, because I don't think life has a lot of absolutes, but this is one of them. Every time I've heard that voice and then acted on it, it has always worked out, always worked out. However, I'm not a perfect human being. So there've been plenty of times when I heard the voice and I ignored it. <laughs> you know what happens when you ignore that voice? Boy, you pay a price. Your life doesn't get any better. I can tell you that. Well, I was just going to say part of this is you have to embrace the idea of being joyful. So this, the download comes. Your choice is to receive it or shut it back. And when you do, I think, receive it, and then you do something with it, I think the joy, the happiness multiplies. And I think too many people are holding back saying, no, I'm not allowed. I'm, I'm just not allowed to embrace that joy of that thing that I was just got. And verse should be, thank you very much. And I'm going to go do it, right? Because I think when we act upon what we hear, then we're in alignment with God. We're in alignment with the universe. We're just we're just in alignment with the, the source of love yes. and life, you know. And when that happens, it's beautiful. I'm telling you, it always works out. When I was younger, I used to ask why. Because I was kind of curious, like psychologist mind. I'm old now. I'm, I don't ask why anymore. I just do it because I trust it. I trust it. It always works out. Just do it. Well, learning to trust yourself and that download or that joy that you want to give out but the the world is screaming no you can't no you can't and you want to learning to trust it and just do it i think it's is extremely huge. liberating and powerful isn't it it's huge it's it's like you have you know this invisible force behind you that that that, that supports you in what you're doing 
and you know whether it's your intuition like i said or your or your higher self or the the universe or god whatever it, it always works just trust me just try it listen to it and act upon it and don't debate whether you said i can just do it and you see what wonderful things will happen in your life don't well, be like me because I've, I've i've ignored when i was younger i used to be like ah, i don't want to do that now the ego that's ego right the ego is the one that says no right if you're heart centered you're like thank you in gratitude and i'm going to go out and do it so i know you have another project coming out called the kindness factor it's gonna be a reality tv show now i'm not a big fan of reality shows but this sounds kind of cool what is this going to be all about this is a a positive human interest story do you know how many good people in organization are doing wonderful things of kindness to make this world a better place but nobody knows about them oh. our goal is to showcase these people and it's usually people that have overcome a lot in their lives and as a result of that having an epiphany and they've they've decided to do start a nonprofit and help others and our whole goal is to showcase them and, and inspire other people to perform acts of kindness and even me talking about it so um this fall in palermo sicily in italy there's the 11th general uh assembly of the world kindness movement and i've been invited to speak there as a keynote from people from 50 countries the kindness movement is growing by leaps and bounds so there's so many opportunities in every city in every state in every country has wonderful people doing acts of kindness so we can do the kindness factor australia the kindness factor in new york the kindness factor in los angeles there's so many good people doing wonderful things just nobody knows about them and we just want to bring them and have the audience get inspired i can tell you we need it in washington dc can, can we have a kindness factor yes. in washington? <laughs> i will host it with you my friend <laughs> you can host it i'd love to do that Rich. yeah absolutely because there are good people even in dc i know we make fun of you know our, uh but every little town even small towns oh. have kindness there's so many good people doing wonderful things so that's my big that's my big project that's a legacy project more than anything else oh i love and, that uh, we, we have a podcast i'd love to have you in our podcast um which is called the kindness factor podcast i i would love to interview you it would be awesome oh, i would love to because this is where again this is your show but i talk on this a lot because there is so much and the junk is so negative it pulls us down the mud and the mire and we don't need to live there but we have a choice to filter it like i said yeah not to be in denial of the news i'm not into like i i want to be uh, aware of what's happening yeah but i can filter it in my own way not what i get fed i'm not i don't like the food <laughs> <laughs> the media <laughs> is trying to feed me <laughs> it's not healthy for me what would you say would be two or three things today for people to find more happiness like i said at the beginning of the show the studies are saying it's pretty grim when we talk about happiness what would be some real practical action steps to say, start this this week or give this a try? You know, before we get there, the, the reason why mental health and there's so much struggle, depression, anxiety, stress, post-traumatic and so on, we have an epidemic of loneliness. Oh, Washington DC was named the loneliest city in the nation. Is that right? Yes. We do need to do a show over there then. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and I think loneliness, you know, when we go back to the blue zones and you and you study why do these people live in deep into their 90s and 100s one of the biggest if not the major factor is connectivity social connectivity connecting with people so you know we we all have these little you know and we all love these and we're all addicted to them to some degree but the phone cannot hug you no it can offer a lot of i mean a tremendous information you can get all kinds of stuff but nothing replaces the human touch yeah you know harvard did this study years ago where if if two human beings hug one another or embrace for 30 seconds not that not, not the quick pattern but actually for 30 yeah. seconds the chemicals that are released in, in our brains last for the rest of the day 30 seconds 30 seconds of hug that's it think about that part well interesting enough during covid we all went to the fist bump and people are still doing it today during covid i was one of those people i admit it that and I had friends, we had not seen each other for ages. It wasn't even thought about. It was so instinctive. We gave a bit of a big of hug, course. we laughed, and people freaked out, but you could feel it. Like this hug meant more than anything else I could have had that whole day. And the studies, Harvard studies actually prove that. I mean, that's a, like, that's a legitimate thing. It's not just like it feels good, it's actually proven. Yeah. So, 
So the three takeaways, first of all, do not procrastinate your happiness. That's number one. Do not procrastinate your happiness because most of us rich live in the future. We're like, when, when I have the right job, when I'm in the right relationship, when I get married, when I have kids, when the kids grow up, when I retire, when, 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 then there are no ones. The one thing that the pandemic at least taught me is like, there are no guarantees about tomorrow. So no. live your best life now and yep. do not procrastinate your happiness. Make it a priority. The self care part, you know, be, before the pandemic, I used to walk like three times a week for an hour. Mm -hmm. I get my three miles and I was doing it because I have to. I'm like, I'm getting old. I got to do it. But when my own stress level increased, like everybody else's, right, to take care of my family, I had kids all over the country, extended family, friends, clients, and so on. I realized that that's not enough. And starting in April of 2020, that's been over four years now, I started walking every single day, every day, no matter what. Yeah. And because and now it became a habit, and that's because I want to, not because I have to. And 50% of the time, it's without my phone, yep. consciously. So I go. I, I call it my gratitude walk. Nice. I listen to the birds. I look at the blue skies. I look at the trees I, in nature, and I ex, and I express my gratitude to God, to my wife, to my family. By the time I get back, my batteries are completely full. I don't go to the gym. It doesn't cost me any money. It's just an hour being outside, yep. but I do it every single day. So consistency is the key. You can't just go for walk three days in a row and skip the next 300. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's absurd. I know I'm talking about every single day, yeah. commit to doing something for yourself in the physical movement. It's not about becoming a triathlete. It's about movement, moderate in moderation. Like Aristotle said, everything in moderation, but what it does to for me physically and mentally has changed my life. I'm not the same person I was four years ago by doing just one thing. Okay, so that we got that one. Yeah. We got don't procrastinate your happiness. And the other one, I know this is in, it's some homework. Find the time to practice the self forgiveness stuff and unburden yourself. Yes. Because I mean, you and I can have a nice interview and shared, but if people don't do it, then they're not any better. So really take the time, write everything down, give it a ranking, and then find a trusted advisor, a trusted friend, or a coach, a therapist, or whatever, and go through that list to unburden yourself. And like Rich said, a thousand pounds of a backpack will be lifted off of you for the rest of your life, and your life will be so much happier that way. Well, and then I'll tack on one bonus step, which I really encourage people to do. After you unpack it with a trusted advisor or friend, strike a match, burn it, and literally let it go. No, I literally do that with my clients. We'll go into the deck here, we light a match, and we, and we actually physically do that, exactly what you said. I've done that many times, and it works. And it's symbolic, of course, right? You're letting oh, yeah. it go. It, it's the symbolism of like being free. Great idea. Thanks for the reminder of that, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Elia Gagoras, again, great having you here with us today. We're gonna put your website up. Now, this takes us to your Joy Center. What are they gonna find when they go to the website? Actually, I was going to give you the DrIliaGregors.com. That's a better uh, website to go on. Not All right. I, yeah. So www.drelia, you know, DrIliaGregors.com. That's the one. All and right. And then uh, you'll see everything that I do, my keynote speaking, uh, books, uh, coaching, and all that stuff, my programs, everything is there. Or we'll LinkedIn. Sure. That's the other place. LinkedIn or uh, the website. And that's where we first connected was on LinkedIn. I mean, that's the place to go to find the great people of the world like you. <laughs> I love your energy, man. You're awesome. It's awesome being on your show. Thank you. <laughs> well, again, this is why I tell people I have fun. And my fun is helping other people shine, get their messages out. And again, in this world, in this particular category of joy, it's so important to get it out there like you're doing with your new show. We need more conversation on that because the doom and gloom story is killing people, literally, emotionally, financially, mentally, career-wise, it's killing people. We can't stay there anymore, can we, doctor? No. And, you know, the one thing about kindness, I, I truly believe that with kindness, everybody wins, meaning the giver, the receiver, and then the, those who are witnessing that because yeah. it inspires them to also give. So that's why I think with kindness, everybody wins. And it's free for the most part. It doesn't really cost much. It's contagious, and it's great to have you here helping us spread the love and spread the word out there about joy happiness doctor really appreciate our conversation today thank you it's been a pleasure being on your show man it's been awesome thank you dr elias gregoria uh and again 
we're going to have that information to go to his website, learn more about him, about what he's doing. Watch for the new TV show. That sounds fascinating. The kindness factor. And again, he said it will be a global show just like this is rock the stage show is uh, on multiple channels around the world. Now, in fact, we are celebrating the news. We're in 71 different countries now streaming around the world, rocking the stage with great international experts, film directors, and just so many fantastic stories like we're talking about here tonight. So again, learn more about Rock to Say. Join us every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time for our premiere night on YouTube. You can join the conversation, drop into the chat, and of course on the Public Place Network. And as always, we want to thank our sponsor for help making it all possible to grow the show. And tonight particularly, to help us get the word out about happiness. Wrapping up tonight, I want to wish you a happy week. Start off, this is Sunday night, 7 p.m. Wake up tomorrow, start off your week with joy, with happiness. It's fresh and it's brand new. Until next week, I'm the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. We'll see you back here for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.